I caught up with Jeremy, the CEO of Atomos, and we talked about products, the future direction of the company, and the Ninja Phone. You're watching Synity, supported by b and and CVP. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from Synity, and I'm here with Jeremy from Atomos. Jeremy, how are you? I'm very good. Good to have you here, mate. Thank you very much. It has been a long time since we talked about products mm. and innovation. So I'm really happy that we have the opportunity yeah. to do this. But before we dive into products, one thing that I really want to ask, because it, it has been on my mind for quite some time, cameras are getting better, yeah. especially with the recording formats. You can now record internally in literally, you know, ProRes, ProRes RAW, and so on. What is the direction of Atomos in general? Because you built a whole business model in case with external recording. Yeah, well, it was monitoring first. Yeah, because there were consumer screens, phone screens, tablet screens. The Shogun used a LG tablet screen original in 2014. So we still have that, right? Um, the cycles of silicon go like it is right now. The cameras catch up to what customized silicon that we use and can now be baked in to the camera. But as time goes on, that gap widens. So for example, in HD, they could do a lot of codecs, but they couldn't do it in 4K. Yeah, so there was a change there. So we jumped on the change. RAW, only the cinema cameras were doing RAW and there was no standard, so we jumped on that. But it's about frame rate and resolution versus what the camera is capable of. So the current generation, you're right, have caught up to what Ninja did, you know, six, seven years ago. But the next generation will be, the next two to three years will be the same as what it is today. So you expect that you will again open the gap with future Correct. products? K240, for example. I'm pushing the camera makers, asking them every day, give me 240, give me 240, give me 120 4K, yeah? So enabling those extra features, you know, I don't think 8K 60 is something really that gonna be that popular. You know, we got hit with, uh, you know, streaming revolution with pandemic, yeah? And that stopped the kind of pickup of 8K plus you know, it's a lot of resolution with not a lot of use compared to where we view it. Our phones are small, our tablets are small, you know, HD at, at really good res, maybe coming from 4K looks really nice. So, you know, everyone's happy. Watching at TV, 4K 60 is enough, with, especially with HDR, yeah? HDR kind of let us keep the, the, the previous generation of speed and resolution and then just view it, yeah, on the TV. Um, but there is a need and the cameras will not be able to do 4K 240, so that'll be our next opportunity. Then even beyond that, 480 or going to potentially maybe some 8K high frame rate to be able to pull out. Yeah, because when you go 240, you've got 24, you've got 60, you've got 50, you've got everything. I mean, BBC did a, a talk, I think about seven or eight years ago that they said once we hit 240, on everything, then we are in a really powerful position. So, it, just correct me if I understand understood it wrong. So you are betting on the high frame rate, fr high frame, high frame rate, rate in there. Yeah, and therefore HD would be at 980 in that case. Now that's interesting. Sure. Right. Good. So I understand so that's the, on the recording side. Yeah, that's on the recording side. So recording is important. There will be another gap. We will jump on that. The cameras will be limited in certain ways by size and heat, and we get to do it on the monitor. Plus, the monitor side is evolving, which is where the direction of controlling the cameras from the monitor, which we've done with Shinobi 2. We're, do, we're in the middle of implementing for Ninja Phone 4K version in with the camera controls, and then streaming it for processing. You know, either editing yourself like a traditional or getting a computer to do it is where that next connection 
is. So 5G is important, phones and tablets are important that are already connected to that network. We will talk about one of your products in a second. Just before, because I recently reviewed the Canon C EOS C80. Yes. Usually, when there's a new camera announcement, the next best thing is you guys uh, announcing support yes. for external recording. This time, there was no announcement. Are you still working or what, yeah, what's, what's the status of the, this? Yes, there will be an announcement. We, we couldn't get it ready to show at IBC. Um, and the development is almost finished for that. What, what would be the, the benefit of using your recording monitor for the EOS C80? Uh, the benefit is really just giving you, you know, bigger storage. Yeah, to be recording longer. Um, you get to put it into the workflow of other cameras at the, with the same format. That's pretty much it. The monitoring and streaming is really where the main interesting you know, additions for the customers are, I believe. Um, and that's a great camera. The, the C80 is a great camera. But, yeah, I was very impressed. Yeah, me too, me too, very impressed. Things like, you know, autofocus, and I think the way that the cameras are developing now, we're getting more and more broadcast features, we're getting more and more cinema features, we're getting more and more automated automation. They need, they still have an issue that the screens are small, yeah, to keep the form factor small, because the camera goes boom if you put a seven inch on them or a, whereas what we're doing is obviously giving you that opportunity to see the image from these great cameras really, really perfectly. And that's where the support really lies, is in the monitoring, the controlling of the camera, doing everything from a touch screen that, of course, you can go to the camera if you want, but controlling it from there is what our research has shown that, that users are looking for. Last question before we dive into the product, I promise, but again, a bit of an interest from my, my side. Good cameras, their prices are being reduced. Yes. It's really amazing. I mean, it's, it's what you can buy now for 5,000 euro, dollars. It's absolutely amazing. Now, you have to manufacture stuff and you have the R&D cost and the manufacturing cost, yes. but there's a limit of how much you can charge for a product that goes as an accessory for a camera. Yes. You cannot charge more than the camera sometimes. No, so how do you cope with that? Well, the same thing's happening for us. Like we don't need to do more than 4K 60 we, or 4K 120 in RAW. And that's been the case for a while. So the silicon, we didn't need new silicon yet until we need to make that step change. Right? That's the main component that costs the most money? Correct, that's the main component that costs the most money. Screens are getting commoditized as well. One of the reasons the cameras are cheaper is silicon's being produced more, the refinement of how that's produced costs less, volumes, are uh, probably you know pretty stable or maybe going up so therefore there's a little cost reduction there we have the same thing our screens are cheaper our chips that we used five years ago are cheaper but you still get the same function so that what hasn't happened is a big step change we had sd to hd we had hd to 4k we had 4k to hdr 4k yeah that's been the same for you know 10 years now right there, there is a change coming, and that's when you'll need a new, more expensive chip. That's when the cameras will either go up in price to have a sensor that can do the 240 or even more in frame rate. And the, I think the main point is we also get more efficient at making products. Can you just hint when this change will come? I think you're going to see it in you know, the next one to two years. I, it's not going to be tomorrow um, because they, you know, that when I say they, I mean the camera makers have the necessity to upgrade their equipment to have you purchase it, right? It, because now it's same, same, but different. You know what I mean? It's, and they're just jamming more and more and more of their tech in, right? So you didn't get AF before, now you get AF. You know, you didn't get three codecs before, now you get three codecs. So they're pushing the silicon because it's getting more efficient. And the only thing they can do is really throw in more features because they don't believe that 8K60 is warranted. Plus, there is a, a hurdle to 8K60, 4K240. It is a step up. You know, it's it's a real big challenge. A lot of people have tried to make silicon chips that, that support those formats. 
and they always end up really long projects, difficult to manage, difficult to finish, and then even, and then the cost goes up, and then when they get to the end, they go, well, I can't even, I can't sell it because it's it was too expensive to make. So they they've stopped that development, but it will come. I think you're looking at probably, you know, maybe NAB two years away. Okay, so please, let's book an interview now. Yeah, for, for NAB two years. Exactly. Yeah, 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 let's do it. <laughs> okay, Jeremy, we are here actually to talk. I know it was a long introduction, but it's always fascinating to hear and to talk and understand the overall envelope. Yeah, but you actually wanted to talk about the Ninja phone, yes. which is not really, really, really new because we announced, you announced it a few months ago. Yes. But for me in general, and again, guys, in all honesty, this is not a product that I'm using on every day. Yeah. Uh, and it's the naming is also a bit confusing yeah. for me when I hear Ninja Phone. So maybe it's also confusing for some of yeah. the guys. So first of all, about the basics. What is Ninja Phone? Okay, it is a, an accessory that gives you Ninja features for phones. And tablets also? And tablets now, yeah. We just announced the iPad Pro uh, 11 and 13 inch. I really like the 11 because it, it's kind of like a Shogun 7 inch because of edge to edge and you know the size of it's so light and portable. But what it does is inject into the phone a large sensor image. Into the phone? Into the phone. So the Ninja, the Ninja on the back, which we've called the Ninja phone, and I'm, I'm sorry if people are confused, but it is a Ninja 4 phones, yeah? And what it does is it takes this uncompressed sensor image, all its brightness and color, recommending HDR, because all the phones and tablets and TVs are all HDR now, so you should be shooting HDR. It is a big difference, and, I, I, and it's more bandwidth, so that's where we've been able to add value. The cameras never used to record 10-bit. They do now, but to monitor it, you need to output it. So that's what we lobbied them to do, and they did it. So it takes this 10-bit 422 uncompressed, beautiful image, puts it into the Ninja phone. We encode it into ProRes to keep the quality but get it small enough to put over the USB-C. Now in 4K, up to 4K30 DCI. And then it goes into the phone. And what happens into the phone is it displays it instantly because we're using the ProRes decoder on the, the chips in, the, in Apple's chips. Then we re-encode to H.265 10-bit 422 in the phone. So you keep that HDR, that beautiful image. And then you've got 5G and Wi-Fi available to stream and out. So it's a monitor, a recorder, and a streamer for your C80. So if I have to, if I can, or maybe you can help me, help me to simplify yeah. the workflow yeah. would be connectivity-wise. Uh, your device, the Ninja phone, That's USB-C, HDMI in, okay, so just the... HDMI in, yep. Then the encoding happens and then it goes out USB-C in ProRes, okay. Then into the phone and our app called the Ninja Phone app on, on the phone side, it knows what's coming, tells the Apple chip, I've got ProRes, decodes it instantly, put it on the screen and then the user can say, I want to re-encode to 265 and send it out or they don't have to. They can just store the program. And the main usage that you see, I mean, you talked about streaming, but is that really the, the main uh, usage of such a product? I think it's, well, I would say the main usage is to use Apple's XDR 1600 nit OLED ridiculously good screen as your monitor. Okay, that's the first thing that it does. And it does it amazing. We give you all the scopes and tools like a Ninja so that you're framing, doing it correctly, yeah? Colors are right, brightness is right, and you've nailed it, yeah? Then, once you do that, if your camera's recording 4K60 internally, you don't, need to rec you don't need to do the ProRes, yeah? That's actually, I do recommend that. If you want, just use the camera's codec internally. If you've got older cameras, this upgrades them, yeah? But then it is the streaming the use of the iOS device, and we are working on Android too, that will be supported. It works. We just haven't finished it yet because I was putting 4K into it for this show. And then it's about getting it out to your external followers, marketing people, customers, whoever you want to send it to. 
And that's where it becomes very, very powerful. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube is all supported and you can send this large sensor image straight to it and have everyone watching it live. And, or you can store it in a cloud system. We've got a Dropbox promotion here because we've just teamed up with Dropbox going directly to their service. You know, you've got Google Drive, you've got iCloud, you've got Frame.io, you've got, you know, professional, depending on who you are. Obviously the broadcasters use their own system so you can just point it to there and it's streaming. But it's taking that beautiful sensor image and sending it over fast networks that are always connected when you've got a SIM card in, in the phone or an eSIM active. So monitor and streaming, and if you want to record either a backup or a better quality than the camera you have, then that's where the Ninja Phone can do the recording for you. So we've got the Ninja Phone app on display over here, got the focus function. You can change these functions, but if you hold on to this button, you can change the intensity of it, or you can change the color of it, and you can see how it affects the image. You can also flip the image upside down and have multiple different options if you wanted to do it the other way. Vector scopes. You can change the style of how you want them as well. Other guides, aspect ratio overlays, zebra tool, your audiometer read over here, and you've got your status indicator. This button up over here is for cloud, camera to cloud, live productions, and frame IO, your general record. And if you go in here, you've got your settings where you can change between HDR or HDR, SDR. You can change between HDR or SDR. We all obviously recommend HLG for H HDR capture. So if you go further deep down into the settings section, you've got the Ninja record option over here. So if you choose the codec, you can choose the different types of flavors of ProRes Pro you can get. You can choose the different flavors of ProRes you can get. You get 422, 422 HQ. And if you go further down, you've got the proxy record and the stream option over here. This is where you can change what the codec of that proxy is going to look like. You've got 10-bit HDR over here, which is an awesome feature. And you can also change the output resolution for your stream slash proxy. You can either match it or keep it at 1080p, depending on what you really want to do. You can also change the quality between low, medium, all the way to extreme. And then going further down, you can change the action button functions and all the default settings of when you pull out the monitoring tools, how they're going to appear on screen. So obviously, it is already available in the market. Yeah. And how much is it? Please remind me. 399. 399. To keep the... So, you know, the reduction is really the screen cost. So you can see like $200 off from a Ninja. Um, a nin Ninja still gives you, you know, 8K RAW, gives you 4K 120. You know, this is at 4K 30 because it really is focused for monitoring and streaming. So that's for iPhone uh, 15 Pro and Pro Max. Will it also support the 16 and yes, 16? Correct. Yeah, we've already, you know, you have to, as a developer, develop the next OS version of your app, which also gives us this. And what will give us the support for this. Um, we will be opening SDK to other applications to receive our ProRes. The Ninja phone also can encode H.265. So you don't have to choose ProRes. You can choose high bit rate 265 that you, that you want to stream, or you can choose low bit rate as a backup from the camera, right? So it's very powerful in terms of its functionality. Um, don't forget the audio. We've got HDMI two-channel audio as well as USB-C audio. So I was going to answer your question as the USB-C on here is really important for USB-C audio, like a Rode microphone to come in. Many, many companies yeah, making Many, many doing it. And it's a hub so you can connect to the camera for camera control. So monitoring and camera control. AF touch on the screen which we're showing on the Shinobi here, and it will move to the Ninja phone. That is where the real game is at, because when you're monitoring and someone's coming in, you want to f follow them, you just touch it on the screen instead of having to go down to the camera to do it. So th that's, a, that's a really big kind of, not hidden feature, but you need to know that that's available. Great. Jeremy, what can I say? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.
Guys, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.